Blue Mini just kind of, it's kind of a Blue Mini. It's a nice car, but it's kind of a Blue Mini because uh, unsuspecting Camaro V8s and Mustangs kind of get eaten alive by this car. So it's kind of a mean little electric that it's got some spunk to it. This is John Wayland, a builder of electric cars. John builds EVs by himself right out of his garage. He's one of those true believers who is committed to finding an alternative to the internal combustion engine. The first time I hit it, we burned rubber all the way out the driveway with the tires smoking. It twisted the drive line, cracked the transmission in half, and came to rest out in the street while all this fluid. I was going, oh, right, this is great, because I had no idea it had that much power. John is an inventor who put his money where his mouth is. This old Datsun is one of his cars. He removed its gas engine and replaced it with an electric one. What's interesting about the electric car, uh, because of the torque of the electric motor, you don't have to shift. Uh, this car is spirited and fun, but you can take off in high gear if you'd like. Um, you can take off in second gear, third gear. You can drive it like an automatic, or you can use the gears. And this particular car is performance oriented, so I like to use the gears because it's more fun. Uh, you get a little bit better acceleration that way. This is the voltage of my main traction pack, which shows that we've got lots of power. And this is the voltage of the accessory system, the 12 volt, for the headlights, the horn, the wipers, and of course, the sound system. The car is on, and yet there is no noise. Nothing's running, nothing's throbbing, spewing out emissions, heat. It's pretty unique. We're on right now? We're on right now. You hear nothing? You hear nothing. And then we just step on the accelerator, and we start moving. Silently, of course. And when you come to a stop, all you can hear is the other cars making lots of noise. I can tell you it costs about one fifth of what it costs to run a gasoline car. It costs me about 30 cents to fill this up for 30 miles of driving. So compared to the cost of gasoline, that's about one-third to one-fourth. But then there's the issue of zero maintenance. There's really nothing to do with this car. There's no antifreeze, no oil, no filters, no tune-ups, no spark plugs, no mufflers. Heck, there isn't even an exhaust system. Love it. And it always runs the same. Whether it's snowing outside or it's sunny like today, it always runs good. It always has full power. Altitude doesn't affect it. Temperature doesn't affect the way the motor performs. Uh, electric vehicles are really wonderful. It's, uh, I always tell people, once you've driven an, in an EV, you'll never go back. And that's the way I feel about it. As attractive as electric cars might seem, the picture isn't perfect. The electric car gives up some of the flexibility you and I take for granted, like the ability to refuel it quickly, the ability to refuel it anywhere, the ability to drive it from here to God knows where on no notice at all. You can't do that in an electric. The laundry man that used to pick up my father's white shirts had an electric truck, and they do have a great advantage. But one of the things where, with the problems with electric vehicles, and I recall Lee Iacocca saying at uh, uh, the International Motor Press Association dinner not too long ago, when he went to work for the Ford Motor Company as a young engineer, they had an electric vehicle. The biggest problem was they didn't have a battery. Now that he was retiring from the Chrysler Corporation, they have a wonderful electric vehicle. The big problem was they don't have an efficient battery. Although most electric cars have no tailpipe uh, because they don't have emissions from the vehicle, uh, there's a smokestack somewhere that is emitting uh, often coal, although in California more likely natural gas, uh, in order to generate the electricity to run the car. So zero emission is uh, a little bit of a misnomer, but certainly the vehicle itself is zero emission. And it's, it's a step along the path. It's kind of funny how people are. Well, don't you have to plug it in? Like, it's a big deal. <laughs> and, and I always go, gee, I think it's a lot bigger deal to go to a gas station, get up from your house, drive somewhere, and pay some slob to pour gasoline over the side of your car. You know, no, this is really, really hard. Watch this. Really tough. You take the power cord. And you plug it in, you walk away. Car's now on charge. And we're drawing 11 amps out of the wall. That's about what a hairdryer would draw. But it does take John 
eight hours to fully charge this EV's batteries. Let's face it, today's motor car is very good. The electric vehicle or the hybrid car is not competing against replacing a horse and wagon. It's competing against a very good internal combustion car. Very affordable, meets all my needs, it's wonderful. John Whalen knows enough about EVs to turn just about any car into one. You're about to see him take this old Datsun, powered by an internal combustion engine, and perform what some call magic. This is what we call a diamond in the rough. This is a 1968 Datsun pickup that should be ready for the scrap heat. You can hear it's got a blown muffler, it's got exhaust leaks, but it's a cute, cool truck, and we're gonna turn it into something special. Uh, right now, it's uh, not that special. We have a, an old tech battery all full of corrosion. We have a greasy motor. So at the end of the day, she'll we be, gonna we're going to have an electric powered truck. Another nasty internal combustion engine component that's not needed. There it is. This is the happy moment when you go from greasy mess to refined, quiet power. This has one moving part. It has an armature that spins around, and that's it. Man, I need one of these hoists. Yeah. So we're getting close to it? Real close. Negative, positive, negative, positive. It's no longer internal combustion. Ready to roll. We've turned the corner and we're underway. The electric vehicle is here. She's alive! It's come out of the garage and it's going down the road. All right! All right. This time around, with the, the big players involved, GM, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Ford, Chrysler, all building them, it's not a pipe dream anymore. This isn't like pie in the sky. We will have electric cars that go 250 and 300 miles on a charge that don't weigh like a battleship, that have room for your family, that accelerate well, that brake well, that do everything a gas power does, car does, except for pollute. 